Washington Institute and the executive director Robert Sandhoff for inviting me to exchange views today on Somalia and the future of the Red Sea. I also want to thank David Schenker for leading this important discussion and all of you for participating in this occasion. I'm joined today by several members of my cabinet, including Foreign Minister, Interior and Security Minister, Minister of Information and Cultural, uh, my advisors. We came here to Washington to meet with the officials in the Biden administration, Congress, and institutions like yours to convey one simple message. Congress, uh, our simple message is our ultimate goal is an international mission for Somalia. But, as a first step, we seek strong engagement and partnership with the United States of America. I look forward to hearing your perspectives on recent developments in the whole of Africa through the Middle East lens, lenses following a few introductory remarks. As the ge geopolitical environment in the Middle East and East Africa continues to evolve, Somalia's contribution to maritime security and trade in the critical region are more important than ever before. Many regional players, particularly those in the Middle East, like the United Arab Emirates, Turkey, Canada, Iran, and global powers like Russia and China have increasingly recognized the strategic importance of having a role and presence in the Red Sea. As a foreign military bases expand and naval forces increasingly patrol in the Horn of Africa, countries that border the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden are increasingly acting about our common security challenges. Similarly, we are pursuing shared economic opportunities as a new infrastructure and trade flows to shape the markets. In many ways, the arbitrary division of the Middle East, the Indo-Pacific region, and the whole of Africa has been short-sighted. Our countries have shared political, economical, and cultural ties for decades, if not centuries. For example, the export of livestock to the Arabian Peninsula has long been a cornerstone of Somalia's economy. The Red Sea is one of the world's most vital global trade routes, through which a significant percentage of global shipping passes annually. A large portion of the world's oil passes as well as considerable trade between Europe and Asia. Somalia, like all countries that share these waters, depends on the person for trade and transit. It is therefore only natural that a more comprehensive regional architecture would emerge to manage the challenges we share. We encourage 
that this is now happening. Policy experts and policy makers who focus on the Middle East and East Africa are coming together to address these markets. Somaliland has more, has more than 460 miles of coastal land along the Gulf of Aden, and the entrance to the Persian as such and has much to contribute to the diplomatic dialogue among states that border this strategic maritime region. Our lack of international recognition should not be a reason for our exclusion from these efforts. As a more integrated diplomatic dialogue takes shape, economic integration is also accelerating. With the Somaliland playing a critical role as an emerging trade and shipping hub. Last June, our government and to a basic port operator DB Well opened a new container terminal at the port of Berba. This, this market the completion of the first phase of significant port expansion and modernization project. In October, DB Will and Britain's Development Finance Agency announced plans to jointly invest in a new infrastructure in East Africa, including the construction of commercial corridors to Ethiopia and other inland neighbors. Thanks to the modernization of the port of Berber, the opening of a new international airport, and other new investments in the key sectors of our economy, Somaliland has become the most stable and reliable continent between much of East Africa and the world's major shipping lanes. As I noted at the beginning of my remarks, I came to Washington to seek a meaningful engagement and partnership with the United States of America. Simultaneously, we all have witnessed the deterioration of the political and security situation in Mogadishu. After nearly a decade of good intention by Mogadishu's partners and much U.S., United States, and international assistance, Somalia's government lacks legitimacy and lacks authority beyond Mogadishu. It remains a source of instability in our fragile region. This failure is provoking new evaluation of policies that previously impaired more direct engagement between the US and Somalia. We heard this first hand over the course of the past week. In my meetings and consultations with the US government officials, I was encouraged by their interest in closer relations with Somalia. The Biden administration has agreed to deepen cooperation on key shared objectives, including maritime security, counterterrorism, humanitarian assistance, environmental protection, and business promotion. Much of this will directly inform our role in the risk. Our delegation received an equally warm welcome in Congress, where Somalia today has more friends than at any point of our history. Last week, a bipartisan group of senators, senators introducing the Somaliland Partnership Act, 
and similar actions were taken in the House of Representatives. These bills would require the defense and state departments to study the feasibility of the security partnership between the U.S. and Somalia. This truly signals a new chapter in our relations with the United States. Our friends here understand, understand that in a troubled region that continues to face instability, poor governments, and threats from terrorists, the successes of Somaliland are no small achievements. We are grateful for their continued engagement and support. From regional security and intelligence cooperation to democracy, promotion, and economic development, the objectives and values sought by the United States align entirely with Somaliland's vision for the whole of Africa. I look forward to discussing how, together, we can advance these shared priorities. Thank you very much.